Today's episode of the Star Local Media High School Sports Podcast is brought to you by Poor Richard's Cafe and Star Local Media. Poor Richard's Cafe, Plano's oldest restaurant since 1973. They are open daily from 5.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., serving the three most important meals of the day, breakfast, lunch, and dessert. It is true Texas homestyle cooking made with love and grit that is Poor Richard's Cafe, located off of Avenue K in Plano. Welcome to another episode of the Star Local Media High School Sports Podcast. My name is Matt Welch, being joined by Kendrick Johnson and Devin Hassan. Uh, gentlemen, it is Monday. It is, I guess, the first official day of football practice for uh, for the majority of the schools that we cover. Um, so yeah, we're just getting one step closer to the start of the season in a couple weeks. Um, in the interim, though, we're going to continue previewing uh, our various districts, our various teams, in anticipation of the upcoming season. Uh, appreciate Taylor Raglan and Brian Murphy for holding down the fort last week in my absence. I was on vacation. They, um, they knocked out the first couple 5A districts and we're going to keep rolling there with uh, I guess District 7 5A week. Wow, wow, West. That's right. <laughs> Today we're going to talk Division 1. Thursday we will talk Division 2. So uh, yeah guys, let's dig into you, you said it Kendrick. Yeah, I mean the Wild Wild West last year, this district, uh, it had uh, what, what didn't it have? Yeah, anything could happen, could happen. <laughs> and the, th the thing that's cool about it is that a Big 12 element like mm -hmm. 40, if you need 40 just to compete. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. See, and that might even be good enough as McKinney North found out a couple times last year. So uh, just to kind of uh, play some catch up, you know, this uh, this district last year was won by uh, John Tyler. John Tyler re-entered the 5A ranks uh, with a resounding uh, undefeated run through district play, and they actually went what four rounds deep in the playoffs. Almost they, they not. Got, but they got some bullets though. They, mm -hmm. if you look at their thing, I don't realize West Mesquite could have beat them. Mm -hmm. North had them. They still mm -hmm. talk about that game. Yeah, West Mesquite was up on going to the fourth. And they quarter. had the Hail Mary game, so they could have easily lost three games in that district. But they, but they found a way. They found yeah, a way though. They, they got did, the dub. So. Props to them. They found a way, and they and, came and, within a hairline of knocking off Highland Park in yeah. the fourth round and I mean they went on the other side of it. <laughs> on the other yeah. side of the game yeah, very, very good team very good team yeah so you had John Tyler winning the district last year you had Poteet placing second and then you had a three-way tie for third place between Sherman McKinney North and West Mesquite all sorts of uh, tiebreaker ice cream headaches there in that final week ultimately though it was Sherman and McKinney North who grabbed those last two playoff spots um so yeah we can talk about you know John Tyler and Sherman and the rest of the uh, of the district a bit later on but let's focus on the three schools that are a bit closer to uh, to our coverage area the uh, the two Mesquite ISD programs as well as McKinney North. Uh, Devin, let's talk about those runners up last year, the Poteet Pirates. Uh, well, Poteet uh, was right where they expected to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is going on, you know, for a decade now. I mean, they made the playoffs eight, eight of the last nine years. The one year they didn't, they still went seven and three. Mm -hmm. uh, just one of those weird years where you get nosed out by a, on a tiebreaker. Um, you know, again, they, they, they're, you brought up the Hail Mary game. You know, Poteet <laughs> obviously thinks that they probably should have been district champions mm -hmm. last year. Um, you know, but that now they have a chance to rectify this situation. Uh, they have a new head coach this year, mm -hmm. Rodney McLean, uh, Cody Groves, who's done such an outstanding job for them, was promoted to athletic director. So what they're hoping is for the same kind of smooth transition that happened several years back when Randy Jackson left and Cody Groves took over. He was the defensive coordinator and he stepped into the head coaching mm -hmm. uh, role and they didn't skip a beat. And so they're hoping for that same kind of continuity. Rodney McLean's been the defensive coordinator there, there for four years, so he knows the players, he knows the system. Uh, I don't expect them to drop off. Mm -hmm. You know, 12 returning stars Seth McGowan, last year's district most valuable player, Oklahoma commitments, you know, rushed for 1,600 yards, uh, 25 touchdowns last year. One of the dominant running backs in the country, mm -hmm. really. Um, they do have a, new, have a new quarterback to break in this year. We'll see how Jalen Police, a good athlete who played on the basketball team last year, got a majority of the snaps in the uh, in the spring. He's a, he's a kid that can move you know, great plays with his legs. Mm -hmm. uh, haven't had a chance to really see him throw the ball. Uh, he does have a ta talented uh, option out there in Tristan Golightly. But uh, we'll see how that comes along. But when you have Seth McGowan to fall back on offense, makes that <laughs> makes it a lot easier. Defense, they should be uh, outstanding once again. Jalen Hodo was the district uh, defensive player of the year, the safety. Uh, they do have some other new faces in the secondary, uh, but the linebacking core is, is stout. Uh, Jalen Updike, Jonathan Kath, Nicholas DeVille, all back, all mm -hmm. altars are guys. So, uh, but he, they, they, you know, Okay, young talented deeps of line, but they're going to be right in the thick of things once again. Have you been able to glean, you know, when you talk about just the transition from Coach Jackson to Coach Groves and how they didn't miss a beat, from you able to glean as far as how, like, the team is breaking in under Rodney McLean, do you anticipate any sort of stylistic change, or are they just going to kind of, you know, kind of keep with the same stuff that they were running under Coach Groves? It's, it's going to be pretty much the same. Okay. I mean, it, there's always going to be subtle changes in the way they handle certain situations, uh, but no major philosophical changes. Mm -hmm. They're not, uh, nothing crazy like, oh, we're going to scrap the spread and go back to a wing tee. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> 
nothing crazy <laughs> like that. You know, it's pretty much going to be a, a similar Poteet team that yeah. you've seen here these last several years. Okay, uh, Kendrick with uh, with McKinney North. Um, so yeah, what is um you know with the Bulldogs last year? I think now were they projected to make the playoffs last season, or were they a yeah. team that kind of okay that kind of exceeded expectations? Not as high as this year. This yeah. year, the expectations are sky. Okay, they got one of the best, the probably the best um, senior class they've had since um, they went to the regional finals with Ronald Jones in 2014. All right. So they're expecting big things out of North. They've turned, of course, the headliner is Brandon Frazier, Arkansas commit, four-star recruit, one of the best tight ends in the nation. Mm -hmm. But what makes him special, people look at the catches and touchdowns, he's like their, one of their best blockers. I would say he's probably their second best offensive lineman. <laughs> wow. He literally <laughs> blows up people when he when he makes impact, he gets them out the way. Their best offensive lineman, is, this is a crazy thing, his name is Austin Markowitz. His twin brother is his is, 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 um, quarterback, mm -hmm. so he's going to be playing center, so he's going to be hiking for his brother all year. Huh. And what makes him special is he can play all three line positions. He's got like nine offers like from um, Lamar, um, Tulsa, ULM, so he's got pretty decent um, uh, school options for next year. His cousin, I mean cousin, he was saying his twin brother, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me Ms. Markowitz, she's like, not cousin, <laughs> his twin brother Dylan. Um, he split time with Cam Constantine his whole career, so this mm -hmm. is his first time being a guy. And the crazy thing is, Poteet last year was his first game to be kind of officially a guy because Cam got hurt, mm -hmm. and he played a really good game, but he did a Tony Romo and made a mistake in the fourth quarter. And I uh, was the Cam Lumpkin, mm -hmm. made one of the best plays I've seen. Kit was backpedaling and just accelerated mm -hmm. and guessed right, and it was a pick six with like two minutes to go. So on paper, they ended up being um, um, north by 14 points, but that was like way closer than that. And then running back, the, to me, this is the most unsung hero. He's going to be the guy that determines how good this offense is. That's put up 40 points three seasons in a row is Manny Fincher, a.k.a. Logic. He's like a Logic the Rapper. <laughs> but this guy's very unassuming. <laughs> Where does that come from? <laughs> oh, yeah, I see the kid. Yeah. Okay. I see the kid. He looks like yeah. the, But he, he's very unassuming. But yeah. he's he's a guy, because North has a history of producing 1,000-yard rushers. I think, oh, yeah. I think Manny's in the 1,005. Uh, Could be 2,000 if everything break right. But people don't realize that guy is going to be a problem. He's a guy like, it don't look like he's doing nothing until he's running by you. Yeah. He can't catch him. I feel like them and the Colony are like, it really is like the... the the laundry list of great running backs that those programs have had. Yeah, it's just no matter what. I don't know if but, it's like if it's a system thing, but it does feel like McKinney North has always got a thousand yard rusher, and it's and the, the crazy thing offense. is their offense is I don't know you you're your numbers guy. They put up I'm forty since I've been covering them three years. They put up forty points or more every year with a whole different cast of characters. I so believe it. Yeah. Pops to the coach Kyle Harden, the guy I've told him he called he called better place than Cowboys offensive coordinator. But that ain't <laughs> none of my business though. But the problem is the D. I don't I don't know where they're going to get consistency but they have a bunch of athletic dudes Coach really real has some great schemes that will give them a chance they have a great linebacker core with Carson Chris and Max Fetchy, Coach Fetchy's son who's very he came on last year nobody's like man what's he what's he out there for he had like 90 tackles and like two or three sacks mm -hmm. and he's a legit problem but the secondary is you know in this district if you can't stop the pass you got problems mm -hmm. so the secondary is where all the questions is so I don't know who's going to be a playmaker in the back end but the the front end, I'm confident in the linebackers. They have a nice rotation, the defensive line. The secondary, they're gonna need somebody to step up. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned numbers because sure enough, yeah, before the podcast, I just went and crunched some data. You know, some uh, you know the uh, the per game averages and points scored and points allowed for those top five teams in the district. Just because I was curious. I mean, I don't cover this district to the extent <laughs> that you guys do, so I just wanted to kind of get some context like, for what's, what, what's happened, all this commotion? what happened last year. <laughs> it is amazing in hindsight what a high wire act McKinney North was last year. McKinney North, they had the highest scoring offense in the district, at least during district play, at 45.7 points per game, but they allowed 42.6. The next highest was like 34.3 by West Mesquite, and then it's like in the 20, 28, 27, 20 for those other, I mean, it really was, like they were a big 12 team essentially. <laughs> so yeah, what is the, I mean, what, what is the likelihood, because if this is a program that does fancy itself as a district title contender, they've got to find a better balance than having to than having to score 50, almost 50 points a game just to squeak ahead. For them, gonna have to close games because yeah. they had John Tyler on the ropes. They let that game go away mm -hmm. on the road at Rose Stadium, which is very hard to win, as Devin knows. And they also um, had the Poteet game. You can't be making turnovers at the end of the game. So they got to find a way to close the deal against mm -hmm. those upper echelon teams. And their schedules, you know, just like they have the same schedule, they close 
with John Tyler and Poteet. Mm-hmm. So we won't know about the uh, to the Bulldogs until the very end because this district, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, any game counts because by them getting upset by Sherman, which was the yeah. most most random uh, equation of the season, Sherman ended up getting in. So yeah. every game yeah. counts. They even had a 60-yard onside kick mm-hmm. uh, in that game that Sherman recovered. Wow. <laughs> That's how crazy. That. It's everything that could go wrong went wrong for the Bulldogs. So yeah. they're looking forward to that rematch. Sherman's got to go to the friendly confines at MIC Stadium. Yeah. So September 27th. I'm they sure, got that uh, circled. <laughs> I'm sure that, uh, yeah, West Mesquite was probably at the time wringing their fists in the air at that result between <laughs> Sherman and McKinney North. Does that wound up being the game that ultimately, you know, left uh, left West Mesquite on the outside of the playoffs later in the season? So uh, let's talk about those Wranglers, Devin. Give me one thing to look forward to about West Mesquite football for this coming season. Uh, well, they have one of the most exciting players in the state. That's a good way to start. In, in Ty Jordan. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's, uh, you know, he's not, the, he's not the biggest guy in the world, He's but he's one of the quickest guys mm-hmm. you'll see out there. He rushed for over 1,200 yards, averaged almost eight yards a carry last mm-hmm. year. Uh, he's got offers from Texas, USC, Tennessee. Um, and he's just he's just a, a difference maker. I mean, he mm-hmm. missed the McKinney North game last year. And you ask anybody at West Mesquite, they win that game if Ty Jordan plays. He's that big really? of a difference maker. I don't know. I, don't know they <laughs> I knew you wouldn't disagree, but they at least they could beat Sherman. Um, and I can beat by 28. Um, but, uh, no, I think, I think West Mesquite has a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. Uh, they've missed the playoffs the last two years, both on on point differential mm-hmm. tiebreakers. And that's just a frustrating way to, no go, to go down. You know, when you sit there and say, we finished tied for third, but we're on the outside looking in uh, a lot of holes to fill uh, like a lot of these teams in this district they're breaking in a new quarterback mm-hmm. um they have some other playmakers besides Ty Jordan. Kobe Walton's a really interesting guy. He was a defensive newcomer of the year last year. Uh, played safety, but he also played on offense. Also played on special teams. Just one of those guys that can contribute in all three mm-hmm. phases. So really interested to see how they incorporate him in now that he's in his junior season. But uh, a lot of holes. They've always had really good athletes on the defensive side mm-hmm. of the ball. Um, and I, expect, I don't expect that to change. It's just going to be new faces. So we'll see what happens. I think this first three weeks is going to be real important for West Mesquite to get those younger guys some okay. experience. As far as the way that that district schedule there's lays out, what do you foresee being their, uh, I guess, the the most feasible route back to the uh, back to the playoffs? I, I really think it's going to come down to the same five teams. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you can count out Texas High. Uh, just because they had such a long run, but it was against a, a weaker slate. We talked about that last season. Yeah. How would they fare in a district that's because they were that like they were expected to be like a like a district runner up at this time last year, weren't they? Yeah, a lot of people yeah. thought so because they I believe they made ten straight playoff appearances. Yeah, they were coming. I get off. it. Yeah, you got to but, but you gotta go with the track record. But but even even a couple of years ago, they went undefeated. You know, yeah. through that district, they went undefeated in the regular season. Yeah. Uh, district champion. They played West Mesquite, who was the mm-hmm. four seed coming out. West Mesquite beat him in the first round. Yeah. So it says a lot about that quality of that deal. Um, um, you know, again, I, I think it's going to come down to the games against McKinney North and Sherman. Mm-hmm. I, I really do think that Poteet and John Tyler at this point right now are cut above. And I think it's a, it's a three-team battle for those two final spots. And um, uh, they all split last year. Uh, the points didn't fall in West Mesquite's mm-hmm. favor. So um, that's something that I guess you got to keep in the back of your mind when you've been edged out on the tiebreaker two years in a row. You always have the scoreboard on your mind <laughs> in these close games. Yeah, Coach Neal's got to have those tiebreakers memorized front and back. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we can talk about a couple of the other teams in the district and then kind of some big picture questions in the district. What are some of the marquee games? Who do we perceive getting into the playoffs? We can uh, continue our discussion for 75A Division One after a quick word from this sponsor. Today's podcast is brought to you by Star Local Media. 14 newspapers and websites with a print distribution of 270,000 homes and monthly page views of 600,000 online. Star Local Media, your community voice for news. And now, let's get back to the podcast. Okay, and we are back as we continue our uh, discussion previewing District 75A Division One in anticipation of the upcoming high school football season. We have talked McKinney North, we've talked Poteet and West Mesquite. Um, let's talk just some quick thoughts about a couple of the other teams that we kind of foresee as the uh, as some of the contenders in this district. Now, John Tyler had their way with the district last year, with the exception of you know a, you know a hail mary that helped uh, you know keep their uh, unbeaten district record intact and whatnot. So, um, it, I mean, I don't know what is the initial expectation right now from what you guys have been able to glean. Do you feel like John Tyler is still the uh, the front runner in this district, or front yeah. runner, but but they if somebody can make them slip up, they, 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 the 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 domino has changed because okay. North almost got them, West Mesquite could have could have got them. So if they slip up somewhere, it could it could change that that narrative. Mm-hmm. Well, John Tyler has uh, outstanding athletes on okay. both sides of the ball. They all but they but they lost their starting quarterback. Well, they lost their top four running backs and they lost their top four wide receivers. 
Wow. That's nearly, I don't know. That's, they, that's, they, that's, they lost, they lost all their Nearly 5,000 yards of offense they have to replace this year. <laughs> so um, that's going to be it's going to be a tall order. I uh-huh. mean, they're going to have to do I think they lost all the running backs. Yeah. Man. Yeah, and that's I mean, and again, that 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 offense was so dynamic last yeah. year, explosive. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, they just like again in the game against Boutique, they the Hail Mary game, they got the ball back with 15 seconds left. <laughs> they they went 75 yards in 15. Too seconds. much time. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. So um, <laughs> they just, yeah. they, I, I'm sure they got guys that are capable of filling those shoes. Yeah. But they they have a lot to prove. They just haven't shown mm-hmm. it out. They haven't had the chance to show it out yeah. there on the field yet. So. Interesting. Yeah, that's wow. Good. Okay. Potentially a very very new look for yeah. uh, for John Tyler heading into this season. Well, 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 Wiley, they they just they just showing up for the prize. They're, they're, but North beat them 90, 90 something to thirty something last year. It's been uh, tough times ever since you know Benjamin left campus. <laughs> <laughs> what about Sherman? I mean, this was kind of the I guess of these of those top five teams. You know, perhaps the uh, the most unlikely entrant of the of the Don't go to Bearcat last Stadium. Season. All their upset wins were at Bearcat Stadium. Okay. I mean, I mean, Sherman's another team that's, I guess, breaking in a new quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they should. Sherman was kind of an odd team to, to figure out. I, yeah. I saw them play Poteet um, early in the district season last mm-hmm. year, and they just, I mean, they did a good job defensively. They just couldn't move the ball. And then a couple weeks later, they do. They had the fifty nine point outburst, and then, you know, it, it just they were kind of real. They were very up and down. Mm-hmm. But you know, credit to them. They you know they really Shut rode in. that game against McKinney North and and took care. Of, they didn't slip up against Wiley East, or they didn't slip up in, in te- against Texas High. And they that's what the, that's what they had to do. Um, so again, though, uh, you know, question mark at, qu- at quarterback. Uh, you know, Mike Tavian Brown was a thousand yard rusher last year, so um, they do have him uh, back in the fold. Uh, you know, so we'll see. Uh, you know, no one really gave Sherman much much of a chance last year. Yeah. I think we all thought, thought it was going to be uh, a John Tyler. Poteet, McKinney North, West Mesquite battle, and uh, they snuck in there. So who's to say that they can't do the same this season? The, 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 the other thing, I don't know if Devin uh, subscribes to this credence because it's not a theory. Mm-hmm. It's the travel in this district is mm-hmm. absurd for high school sports. So going out to a Tyler, going out to a Texarkana, even going out to a Sherman, you got over an hour bus ride. These are high school kids, and that throws off that routine and make it make it made a big difference. That North found that out last year. Yeah. This year I got to go to Texarkana and last. Year they beat them in a shootout. The game didn't start to nine because it happened in September with the, the September showers, and then it was a 44 41 shootout. Yeah. So that makes a big difference when you get these shootouts and getting them on the road after being on a bus for two or three hours. So that that I think that that might get somebody slipping. That'll make uh, for a, uh, an interesting plight for West Mesquite because they have to make the trip to Texarkana and to Tyler this year. Whoa. So they're the only district that has to make both, though. You have, you know, McKinney North has to go to Texarkana, Potita has to go to Tyler. Um, Wiley East, as I said, everybody's coming to them this year. At least yeah. as far as those, uh, as far as Texas High and John Tyler go, they don't have to make any, you know, two, three-hour bus rides. Uh, Sherman is at Texarkana. John Tyler has to go to Wiley East, to McKinney North, to Sherman, and Texas High has to go to Poteet and to Wiley East. Good stuff. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, um, all right. So let's just talk about uh, just a couple of the kind of the marquee games to watch in this district. Um, we've talked about we've laid the uh, the groundwork for these teams. So as far as when they actually throw down, let's give me uh, one game from each of y'all. What is the marquee game to watch on this district schedule? Oh, if, if, uh, one of his. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah. I, 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 I spilled, You know, showed my cards early. Uh, Poteet and, yeah. and, and John Tyler. John Tyler. Uh, no, November. How could 1st. it not be? Yeah. November first at um, at Rose Stadium. Uh, you know, this was last year when we did the same podcast. I, I mean, I think. I probably picked the same game. That's what everybody thought was gonna it was gonna come down to them, and it did. Yeah. Um, you know, again, and it was just such a great game. Uh, you know, John Tyler was up twenty-one nothing in the first quarter. Mm-hmm. You thought oh, all this built build up all this hype, and we're gonna get a blowout. Well, Poteet just they just kept coming, they kept coming, they kept coming, they kept hanging around, and finally, like I say, take the leap with fifteen seconds left. Uh, only see Devlin Woods find Keandre Street as time expires for um, <laughs> for the Hail Mary and Poteet still. I, I know it's still a sore subject out there, but uh, they have a chance to yeah. exact their revenge. Uh, as as I alluded to before, this is gonna be a very new look, mm-hmm. John. Tyler team uh, they certainly had the talent they were picked in, in the, the two preseason polls I saw there John Tyler was picked to win mm-hmm. the district in both of them so obviously there's talent there I think Proteet has the more proven commodities right now especially when you look at Seth McGowan uh, at running back I mean he went for 176 and four touchdowns last year against John Tyler I mean they could they could they really didn't have an answer for him yeah. especially as the game went on because he just dominated that fourth quarter mm-hmm. um, you know playmakers like Jalen Hodo on defense uh, you know I just think right now 
I, I would give the edge to Poteet. I, I expect Poteet to win this district. Okay. And I expect him to beat John Tyler. But again, by that point in time, I mentioned John Tyler having all these new guys. By November 1st, they're yeah. not new guys anymore. Yeah. They're, they're going to have you know basically a full season of experience. Yeah, you belt. know what you are. So they're going to be a to totally different team in November than they are right here in August. But uh, right now, like I say, I give Poteet the edge. Kendrick, uh, what is your game to watch? OT and McKinney North. Okay. I, I think I think um, North is on a mission to uh, rectify last year coming up short. They think like yeah, people like him that act like Poteet just way better. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it wow! Just, it came to one play. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> it came down to one play. Uh, the guy guy made a he heck of a play. Uh, uh, Cam Lampkin props to him, but. Um, North's got to find a way to close it, but that yeah. that sets the trend for their playoff. Last year, they lost. They ended up losing to Don Tyler, mm -hmm. got in the playoffs and got beat by Lufkin. So that's going to be key. And another thing we learned from this district is if you don't finish in the top two, it's a hard road in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You don't want those problems. <laughs> Whoever you are, you do not want those problems. Well, even Poteet last year, that was, you know, they lost the number one seed and that lost to John Tyler and yeah. ended up having to play a defending state champion in the first round in yeah. College Station. And again, it went down to the wire and, and similar Similar to the John Tyler game, they lost in heartbreaking fashion late, 41-38. So yeah, I mean, seating is important in this. And district. then if you win this district, you don't see, uh, you can't see Highland Park, and to, to, unless you plan for a birth to the state title. So who, I don't, regardless of how good Highland Park is, they still three times to finish state champions. I'm gonna see them as late as possible. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Um, all right, let's close this out with a uh, with a look at. Uh, I guess right now, sight unseen for a lot of these teams. You know, we don't even know what they look like in their respective scrimmages. But as of this point, right now. Um, who do you feel like are the top four teams in this district? Poteet, North, John Tyler, and West Whiskey. Is that in order or just those are, are your top four? That's my top four. Okay. Yeah, yeah if, I had to, if I had to choose in order right now, I'd say Poteet, John Tyler, um, McKinney North and West Mesquite. Uh, I'm gonna go on record North. Yeah, it made me look good. North's gonna beat John Tyler or Poteet this year. I don't know which one. <laughs> well, there we go. No pressure, Bulldogs. No pressure at all. All right, guys. And yeah, that'll round out this uh, this preview for District 75A Division One. Some spirited discussion about the uh, McKinney North and Mesquite ISD as they prepare for the latest chapter of what should be another thrilling district season over in 75A D1. And yeah, that'll wrap up this episode of the uh, of the podcast. We'll be back on Thursday to talk about the other 75A. Over in Division Two, um, we'll see if it gets as heated as this one did. Um, nevertheless, folks, hey, Kevin Dendrick, uh, Kevin and Dendrick, <laughs> Kendrick and Devin, I appreciate you guys for tagging along, and Kevin and Dendrick uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. We'll see you guys on Thursday. You enjoy your weekend. We will talk to y'all later.